And that's what we're looking to do with our financial wellbeing sessions. We're looking to get in and educate as early as possible. We're involved with the inductions here at Master Builders SA now, which is fantastic. So we get an opportunity to get in front of the apprentices and really work through some good financial habits. And as you say, if you can get into those earlier on, you're really going to amplify your potential. Welcome to Building Perspective, the Master Builders SA podcast. I'm your host, Will Frogley. Join me as I speak with some characters in the building construction industry. At Dulux Trade, we're making pain easy for tradies all over Australia. With over 230 stores and over 1,000 paint professionals, expert advice for your next job is closer than you might realise. Need specialist advice for a tricky job? Easy. On site and need it delivered? Easy. So get to know your local Dulux Trade Centre, Inspirations Paint or Paint Spot today. And while you're there, sign up for Dulux Trade Direct for trade pricing and simplified ordering. Because at Dulux Trade, we're making paint easy. Well, finance can be seen as a pretty dry area normally, but at the moment, whether you like it or not, you can't avoid it. With interest rates going up, there's a lot of uncertainty and even fear out there. So we thought it'd be quite timely today to bring in Justin Davis and uh, Anna Barney from Beyond Bank to give some advice about some of the things they can do to assist people in the industry right now. Welcome. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Yeah. So probably the first question, can you just tell us a bit about Beyond Bank and what you actually do? Certainly can. So for those that don't know, Beyond Bank's been around for over 60 years. We're 100% member owned, which actually means that the profits that we make come back to our organisation to deliver better rate product and service to our members. So we're very, very involved in the community. We put a lot of money out in the way of sponsorships and partnerships to community organisations, not-for-profit organisations and community groups like Master Builders South Australia. So, and uh, for those that know what B Corp is, we are also organi- we are also certified as a B Corp organisation, which shows that we're very transparent, ethical, and how we conduct our business, and we're about long term sustainability. Oh, fantastic! And for those members we've got who aren't sure about what Beyond Bank can do for them, can you tell us a little bit about that? Certainly can. So, we're a bank. A lot of people say, you know, are you are you a bank? Yes, we are a bank, like any other bank. When we're, we're not the big four. We're a bank that offers the same products as most banks, so term deposits, personal loans, car loans, investment home loans, residential home loans, business banking, salary packaging. We've got an award-winning app for internet banking. So the things that you'd normally find in a bank, that's what we've got. So how have you seen the last probably, what, eight months or so, eight, nine months with just rolling interest rate rises, how is that impacting, you know, uh, the, the clients that you're interacting with and, how, you know, how, how much fear is there actually out there at the moment? How much uncertainty and how hard it is to plan with confidence in the current environment? Look, right now the rates are rising and we'll probably see another couple of rate rises and um, I think if anyone thought they were going to sit around that 2% mark for too long, that was just not going to happen. So, There are small increments at the moment. I think it's really, really important to look at your finance on a regular basis and review them and make sure that you can save costs wherever you can. Look, it's a sign of the times. I think we probably needed to slow the market down a little bit. But at the end of the day, people are still out there buying property and they're still building um, and they're still buying cars. So, you know, you just get used to it and you adjust it. But you need to look at your finance on a regular basis and um, make sure that everything's in control. You do have to wonder, don't you, how the RBA could get it so wrong? I mean, saying that the cash rate wasn't going to increase for, I think, three years, anyone working construction was seeing the rolling price increases, significant double-digit price increases for pretty much every input you can think of, whether it was timber, steel, gyp rock, whatever it was. It just seemed ridiculous. We're a massive industry, obviously. That there's, There was no way that inflation wasn't going to be a problem, but I guess here we are now. We've just got to grapple with it, don't we? Yeah, that's right. We just have to go with what uh, we're dealt out with, I'm afraid. And, you know, it, it is what it is. So, like I said, you have to make the most of it and do the best you can and just keep reviewing everything from insurances to your home loan or your investment loan or your, your credit card debts or whatever it might be. You just need to keep looking at things and keep on top of them and be responsible for your finances. So that's probably a good time to bring you in, Justin. So why is being across your finance so important for any person in the building construction industry? Uh, yeah, I guess just in, in general, it's always important to be reviewing your finances because I think you'll find over time things can get away from you a little bit if, you, if you're not keeping a close eye on things, I guess, in terms of interest rates. 
you know, once you've been with a bank for a period of time, you might find that you're actually not on, on the best deal that they can offer. So, yeah, it's certainly important to make sure that you're, you're always reviewing and, and you're on the best rate available. You know, if you're talking specifically about the building industry, you know, cash flow is a, is a huge part of that, managing supply lines and that sort of thing. So you need to make sure that you sort of free up your cash flow as much as possible um, and you're reviewing that regularly. Cash flow is just the king in, in our industry, really, isn't it? I mean, you can be the best on the tools in the business, but if you're not on top of your cash flow and your finances, it can all unravel pretty quickly, can't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that's that's something that's got to a point where we're starting to see a little bit of that happening um, for certain builders that are, that are getting to that bit of a crunch point. So, yeah, definitely um, something that you need to be on top of yeah, all the time. So in South Australia, and every time I make this point, I do knock on wood, we seem to have fared far better than virtually anywhere else in the country when it comes to insolvencies. Why, why do you think that is? Is it because the market here is a, or the, the industry here is a bit more conservative or we don't have the scale that I guess have magnified some of the problems in, in, in the East Coast, for example? Have you got any, any theories about why that might be? Yeah, potentially, I suppose. Adelaide generally for, for a long period of time has been a very stable market and we haven't seen that volatility that, that the eastern states um, have provided. So you could say, yeah, that consistent growth and probably people's expectations of what they're going to be spending on a build and that sort of thing is uh, maybe maybe slightly more conservative as over in the eastern states. And, you know, we do have some higher end builds going on as well, but not quite to the level that you might see over there. So yeah, I guess generally speaking, that can lead to to a more stable sort of environment um, within the building industry and and the economy wider. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think uh, we are conservative in South Australia generally, and then also I think the, the 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 classic example of why builders have gone bust around the country over the last two years really has been because they haven't built enough margin into the contract. So, you know, they price a job, then the cost of everything's gone through the roof, and then at the end of the job, they ended up actually losing money. Now I think I think my theory is just around scale. So because there's much more, you know, numbers in in the eastern states in Western Australia and stuff like that, it makes a difference if you're losing say five k on a job and you're building, you know, fifty homes rather than you know, say five homes. It's it's easy mm. to get out of that. That's a theory that I've got at the moment. But mm. again, I'm I'm very nervous about this because South Australia's largely been untouched to date. But it seems like every every week there's a builder somewhere around the country going under. That sentiment, more than anything, sometimes can um, dent people's confidence a little bit. If you're looking at building and you're hearing, whether it is locally um, or, or nationally, you're hearing another build is going under, it might make you think twice. But yeah, as you say, I think it's important to to make sure you keep looking at, from a localised point of view, in Adelaide, things are relatively still pretty stable in terms of yeah building and, and there's still plenty of construction going on. And yeah, and especially in sort of residential, there's a lot of developments happening, yeah, sort of out in the suburbs are pushing out even more and more. But yeah, there's still plenty of block sales going through and yeah, plenty of contracting going on. For yeah, and we, we came off a, a record high demand, obviously, off the off the back of Home Builder. And I think that recent announcement from the state government that they were having a record uh, land release in, in the south and north, uh, I think that was a really positive thing because... You know, that we've talked at length about the cost of materials going through the roof, the cost of labour going through the roof, but at the end of the day, the fact that it affects home affordability more than anything else is, is land supply. So if you're massively increasing land supply, that's obviously going to be helpful if, to anyone that wants to build their own home. If you can find the right block of land um, and, and it's affordable um, for you, as you say, cost of the build contract side of things might be going up. So where else can you potentially save in cost? Well, it might be about... Uh, finding that block that's right for you in the right area. But if the supply is there, then obviously that will help keep prices down um, from a pricing perspective with the land. And then, yeah, obviously that will play into things being more doable uh, for people in terms of yeah building their first home or potentially if they're looking at you know building investment property. With rates going up all the time, that's affecting borrowing power. So it's not just costing of, of the build itself, but also, yeah, as rates go up, people's borrowing capacity will be decreasing. So, yeah, it's important that they're assessing it holistically and making sure they can stay within their means as well and not um, sort of tapping themselves out. So if, if there is another one or two rate increases, then, yeah, you're potentially getting to a point where it's a bit difficult. So it's important to sort of 
stay within your means, I guess, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that residential is, there's still a lot of work going on there at the moment. What's really positive, there's a lot of non-residential work going on as well, and we really expect that to be, remain very strong over the next couple of years. There's pretty significant investments from the government on uh, health infrastructure coming up as well, which should keep a lot of people really busy in our industry, which is really good to see. I guess now what I'd really like to ask you, can you give us some examples of how you've specifically helped um, a builder or someone in the industry with their finances uh, recently? Yeah, certainly. Anna and I have been running some financial wellbeing sessions um, with our partnership here um, at Master Builders. And after one of our sessions, we had Prentice come up and have a chat with us because they were looking at potentially, you know, down the track, what they might be able to do, purchasing their first home. So yeah, after having a, a chat with them a bit more in depth, um, we discovered that, you know, potentially they're already in a position uh, to be getting into their first home. There's often a lot of uh, misconception out there. You have to save a huge deposit, but there are actually other options as well, um, which Beyond Bank can help with. So talking about parent equity home loans, and there's also some other government incentives out there currently that, that can assist you to get into your first home. So, yeah, I think it's it's really important. We're talking about reviewing your finances if you already have things in place, but it's also important that if you think you might be looking at doing something down the track, that you get in and have a chat because you may be in a position sooner than you think to, to get into that first home. Or it might be, yeah, if you've got your first home, looking at that investment, yeah. Isn't it great to hear that an apprentice is, is that switched on, that they're already thinking about that down the track? Because it can seem completely unattainable whilst you're an apprentice, but within a couple of years, they can be earning really good money out in the industry and able to pay that, that home loan off um, quite comfortably. Uh, yeah. It's a big you know a big gap from earning apprentice wages to five years out what you could be earning. So mm. you've got to be thinking about that now and, and thinking things that seem completely unrealistic are actually very achievable, aren't they? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that's why, that's what we're looking to do with our financial wellbeing sessions. We're looking to get in and educate as early as possible. Um, we, we're involved with the inductions here at Master Builders SA now, which is fantastic. So we get an opportunity to get in front of the apprentices and really work through some good financial habits. And as you say, if you can get into those earlier on, when you, you know, maybe you're not earning the big bucks that you might be able to down the track, but if you can build those financial habits, you're really going to amplify your potential financial goals that you can achieve down the track once you are starting starting to earn those, yeah, the bigger money. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, our apprenticeship program's grown massively over the past, say, 18 months. We, we're currently employing close to 200 apprentices now, and it's it's fantastic to see that happen because, you know, we've had a massive shortage of trades mm. in the industry the last couple of years, as I think everyone's well aware. What would be your number one piece of advice, a financial advice to an apprentice that's just starting out in the industry? Yeah, look, I think it's simple. There's no sort of magic solution when it comes to finance. Um, it's important that you just sit down and have a look at your budget and be realistic about what that is um, and, and costs that you've got to allow for. And then go away, look at putting an account structure in place with your banking to make sure that you're able to stick to that budget and then once you're up and running, you've got to check in and review. It's all well and good to have this pie in the sky figure of, you know, what you'd like to save at the end of the week or the end of the fortnight. But if that's not actually happening in reality, why is that the case? And there's some great apps out there that you can use to assist in reviewing things as you go along. Beyond Bank has our Beyond Bank Plus app, um, which is fantastic. And yeah, we hear a lot of good feedback about people using that to, to keep track of their finances. So yeah, I guess that's that's the best thing to do. Keep it simple, get a budget in place, structure accounts to assist with that budget and then check in as you go along to make sure that you are on the right track. You know, I think if you have a quick look at some numbers, say you, you spend $10 a, a day um, on your lunch or a coffee or something like that. If you add that up over a year, you're looking at $2,600. So it can add up very quickly. Um, so yeah, it's important to nut out what you are spending and then, well, what are your actual goals? You know, where do you want to be? How much do you need to save? Go on that holiday, buy that first property, upgrade your vehicle, whatever it is. Yeah, important to sit down and thrash it out. Absolutely. And Anna, turning to you now, I guess at the other end of the spectrum, there's, you know, we've got a lot of members who, uh, you know, own their own business or uh, perhaps winding down even to retirement. What kind of advice have you got for people in, in that kind of um, uh, demographic? So those who have got their own business, again, the same thing. They need to keep reviewing their finances, keep looking at them, 
you know, how, where can they save money? Obviously, some of them are still wanting to create wealth. They might not be ready to retire yet, but they are looking at how they're going to retire, the strategies to retire. So that's certainly an area that, that, you know, a lot of people don't know how to use equity in their home. So that's an area that we can help them with or we have been helping them with is looking at how much equity do they have in their home. And they're so busy running their business. They don't have time to even think about it, but um, they could be creating wealth ready for retirement by using equity in their properties. Some of these people too, the running business are so busy and good at what they're doing that they haven't got time to look at their finances, to restructure, consolidate debt, um, and just re review their banking as often as they should. So we're here and we have been here to help them to consolidate some of their debts, tidy up their finances, find ways to save money and uh, put more money in their own pockets. And like I was saying, use the equity in their homes to create some wealth by buying more property or investing somewhere um, that's going to be beneficial to them in their retirement. Um, we have got financial advisors at Beyond Bank as well that people can talk to to look at ways of A, reducing taxable income and B, um, strategies for retirement. So that's an area that we've been helping people that are connected to uh, Master Builders SA um, in strategies towards retirement so that they can get out of their jobs, out of those busy lifestyles that they've got and start to enjoy life a little bit. Absolutely. So I guess the, the two main ways that people plan for their retirement are really from superannuation and investment properties. And the, the latter is definitely very common in our industry, isn't it? We've got a lot, of, a lot of people in the building construction industry own investment properties. I mean, what kind of investment properties do you think you need to have to be able to support yourself through retirement? Is it, do you need multiple small ones or you know maybe one really large one? What's, what's your best advice for that? Well, that's a really good question, Will, because it's a real individual thing. You know, I see people that have, you know, six or seven properties and I see people that have one or two properties. So it's a real, it's an individual thing and it depends on how, how early you started. Um, and again, as Justin was saying earlier on, we've been talking to the apprentices and trying to get them um, to understand how soon they, how quickly they can create wealth by investing in property if that's something they want to do. Because the sooner you start using equity or start buying investments and you know creating wealth by buying more and more property, the the sooner that you're gonna you're gonna have this little nest um, nest egg at the end um, that you can retire on. So it's a hard one to say. It's a real individual thing. Whether you know some people are scared of even buying their first investment property, but I think once you get past that first one, you you sort of think, oh, this is good. Mm. You've got someone that's um, paying the rent and. If it's an interest-only loan, which generally if you've got your own home loan and you're paying principal and interest, generally a lot of people do interest only on their investment loan and let the tenant pay the loan off for them. And uh, when you know the equity grows in the property that they've bought, they then look to buy another property. So you, know, you can end up having two, three, four properties, but that's a real personal thing. I see that a lot in the industry because we've got a lot of people who perhaps don't have very much super at all, but then they've got quite a few multiple investment properties, and that is the way they plan for their retirement. So it's uh, I see that a lot in our industry. Yeah, that's right, it can, and it can be a really good thing to do. You can set yourself up so really nicely, so that especially right now when we've seen um, this great rise in property prices and and equity in people's property. You know, if you're selling your property now, you might be making five, six hundred thousand out of a property that you bought, you know, many years ago. So it's certainly like anything that uh, um, you invest in, you know, things might do really well and then they might come back a little bit. But yeah, but I think bricks and mortar is not a bad, not a bad way to go. I like it anyway. Things you can see and touch, right? No, That's uh, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So anyone who might be uh, listening or watching this podcast and, and wants to get in touch with Beyond Bank to, I guess, look into some of the services you can provide, what's the best way of going about that? Most definitely give us a call. Um, I think at first point, give Justin a call. Yeah. Yeah. You can give me a call. So my mobile is 0490 four three seven six zero eight I mean yeah obviously you can have a chat through what you're looking to do um, whether that might be something that I can assist you with or um, if it's saying that maybe someone else one of our experts within beyond bank that may be able to assist I can I can get you in touch there but then I think also in the show notes and we're going to have a link to our website and some other great resources such as the the budgeting tool um, and planner um, as well as yes yeah, and blog posts um, we've got a branch network all across Adelaide as well. So yeah, you can have a look online and, and see where your closest branch is and pop in and have a chat to anyone from the team there. They'll be able to 
either assist you there and then face to face or or yeah get you in touch with one of our specialists and the great thing, Will, is that uh, we have a mobile lending team or mobile banking team, so we can come out to you. We can come out to your workplace. We can come out to your home, and it can be after hours, two at a time, that suits you. That definitely suits everyone in our industry who have a very hectic schedule, so that, that's a great thing to know. So, yeah, plenty to think about today, and it's, it is so important in this current environment that you're right on top of your finances and you're thinking you know, long term, not just thinking the, the week ahead or the day ahead. So plenty of good things to consider there. And Justin, Anna, great to have you on the Building Perspective podcast. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. us. No worries. Thanks. Thanks for joining me on Building Perspective. For more information on Master Builders or our guests, please visit our website at mbasa.com.au.